Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to share that NASCOM, in collaboration with uh, Arsene, is releasing a research report engineering and manufacturing and, uh, transformation certification of portraits for the mass. The report talks about the movement of engineering functions to the cloud and the certification of all engineering functions. To release this report, I'd like to now invite uh, Akita Ghosh, Senior Director and Head Insights NASCOM and uh, Stockwell.com. Uh, but Margaret, Senior Research Director, I will send to the stage. Gentlemen, over to you. Thanks, Justin. Hello, everyone. My name is Achyuta Ghosh, and I head Insights at NASCOM. It's an absolute privilege for me to welcome everyone to the launch of the NASCOM report titled Engineering Manufacturing Transformation, Cloudification Approaches Critical Mass. Traditionally, enterprises were reluctant to manage their engineering and manufacturing operations on the cloud due to high complexity and security concerns. This reluctance is fading away as the industry and the underlying technologies continue to evolve. In this study, we have looked at what are the unique requirements from engineering and manufacturing companies when it comes to cloud. We have also spent considerable effort in sizing the market opportunity, current and future. We have showcased the ecosystem in India and highlighted impactful case studies and shared recommendations to key stakeholders to make the best out of this opportunity. My colleague Vandana will talk about key findings from the report in detail, but we'll also like to request Swapnil, Senior Director at Avasant, our research partner for this study, to share a few words. Swapnil, over to you. Thank you so much, Ashuta. Uh, it, it's indeed a pleasure uh, to be launching this labor of love. I think we've been working together for the last three, four months on this very, very important topic. Um, so we work with a lot of manufacturing and engineering organizations. And this is one key trend that we've been seeing, uh, that there is much more openness towards using cloud, uh, especially in the last 18 to 24 months, uh, where some of the features of cloud, uh, such as, you know, in uh, heavy collaboration, high security, and all of these features have become uh, have broken down some of the traditional walls that manufacturing and engineering companies used to have towards cloud. Uh, and that's those are some of the findings that are coming out from the report as well. So so really happy and excited about having this partnership uh, between NASCOM and Avasan uh, to bring uh, a deep, detailed study of this space and the opportunity uh, within it and in the future. Uh, so I, I really hope that everyone uh, goes through the report and really uh, sees a lot of value coming out of it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Optin. Can I request you to launch the report formally with me? Of course. Okay. So um, thanks, Optin. Um, handing it over to Vandana for sharing the key findings. Vandana, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Achita. Uh, so I'll share the key highlights of the report. So uh, the key highlights include uh, that the global engineering and manufacturing cloud market is expected to cross over $100 billion in 2030. And as the traditional reluctance to adopt the cloud for engineering and manufacturing operations fades away, the growth is expected to fast track and continue at a steady pace. Another highlight is that due to technology and industrial developments, the market is expected to grow at a double-digit CAGR in the next five to seven years. SaaS applications, sustainable engineering, and quantum computing are expected to revolutionize engineering and manufacturing operations in the long run. Applications with higher computing and collaboration requirements, such as PLM and design systems, are expected to move faster to cloud in the short to midterm. Design and simulation systems such as CAD, CAM, and CAE, which have heavy workloads and high collaboration requirements, have medium to high adoption of the cloud and are expected to further grow due to high product innovation requirements. Complex manufacturing and operation systems such as MES and SCADA are expected to pick up pace in the long run. Currently, automotive, manufacturing, and healthcare sectors are moving their engineering and manufacturing operations to cloud and witnessing highest adoption due to high collaboration and innovation requirements. In the next five to seven years, high-tech and telecom are also six, expected to be highest adopters. 
The role of service providers has become critical as a key enabler in driving cloud adoption for engineering and manufacturing operations, owing to the pressing need for business innovation, faster product rollout, and cost containment. Their role is expected to grow as ecosystem players find new avenues to collaborate through joint GTMs and co-innovation and offer bundled solutions. Some recommendations to stakeholders, such as enterprises, include moving beyond lift and shift migration to realizing long-term business value and approaching the cloud for engineering and manufacturing operations with the right expectations and defining a clear roadmap, thereby identifying the right cloud model with clear security and governance strategies for engineering and manufacturing workflows. Service providers must bring together a combined strength aimed at driving innovation, improving ROI for enterprises, and solving the talent crunch. To drive faster adoption of cloud, ISVs need to standardize SaaS solutions, offer pricing flexibilities, and improve on integration and security aspects. Cloud platform vendors must follow the path by supporting compute intensive workloads and solving for data interoperability and security. You can download this report through NASCOM community's website at community.nascom.in as well as the main NASCOM website, which is nascom.in. In continuation, now we will also have a fireside chat between Mr. Robert Taylor, CIO, Fluor Corporation and Swapnil Bhatnagar, Senior Research Director, Avasant. Thank you, Vandana, for the kind introductions. Um, uh, thank you, Robert, for take, making the time to speak to us today. Uh, it's, it's a need and honor uh, to have this discussion with you. Um, jumping right into it, Robert, uh, you represent a firm that has been one of the most progressive firms when it, term, when it comes to the adoption of cloud in, in the engineering construction, that, that space. Uh, and you've also been with the firm over, you know, I think two decades, if not more. Uh, so you had a big role to play in that entire progression. Um, why don't you maybe start us off by talking about uh, Floor's story, Floor's journey with the cloud adoption? Okay, thank you, Swapnil. And yes, I have. I've been with the company, uh, first joined in 1986. So I've been with the organization for a long time. I started as a structural engineer, but then went to the, the dark side in IT in, in the early 90s. So, you know, I appreciate the comments about, you know, Fleur being progressive in cloud. And I think that's, um, we certainly believe so, but I think compared to other industries, we're probably lagging in the cloud adoption. Um, you know, the early adopters of cloud whether it be the, the consumer industry that had to deal with, you know, Friday shopping or, you know, Christmas shopping, whatever the case may be, or other industries, you know, like the music industry, then a, a new popular artist is released, you know, that, that demands on compute power is enormous and, and that drove early adoption for them. But we don't see those demands in the EPC industry, you know, our compute requirements are pretty consistent. So I think what, what, drove us early in, into cloud um, was really to help the execution work process, process where on these very large capital projects, you're moving that workload, um, you know, from let's say in North America, across into, you know, the Asia Pacific region, then into Europe and then back into, into North America. And some of the applications meant that we had to actually move the workload. And, and, you know, you'd replicate that through the, the infrastructure. But the big benefit we got from cloud was really the, um, the ability to better manage access control and, and provide people access into that data on a, on a consistent basis. So that was really, I think, the, uh, um, the motivator for us to get into cloud. And, you know, that's, that's in support of project execution. Um, but we'd also had a lot of early work in cloud adoption relative to storage and these things when we're just looking at different commercial models to, to try and lower the cost of, of IT as a, you know, as a service provider to our projects. So, you know, that's historically what drove us in that direction. Right. Um, 
So that's interesting. Um, also, do you think that over the last two, three years, especially with the pandemic hitting in, uh, did, did you sense that the adoption of cloud in the EPC industry for uh, different use cases, has that changed? Do you see any change happening over the last two years, two, two and a half years or so? Yeah, you know, obviously uh, the pandemic has had a, an impact on us all in, in so many ways we never predicted. Um, I think we we're very fortunate that back in, you know, not 2019 and, and early 2020 before the pandemic hit, that because we'd had, you know, solid cloud adoption and it had the authentication capabilities already implemented, when when the pandemic did hit and, you know, the global 25, 30,000 population of the company had to work from home, we were able to adapt to that really quickly, you know, less than a couple of weeks. And it was really, you know, the, the access controls and, and being able to get to your project data and share that data with your clients really didn't take much of a uh, hiccup in that process because we we're ready. But it is it is fair to say that since then, I think because of remote working, work, you know, worker employee flexibility and these type of things, the, the acceleration of cloud has definitely improved. But I think that's happened also in conjunction with, you know, the infrastructure capabilities have improved. Um, the application portfolio that we use historically is becoming more cloud native. And so it's easing the adoption. So there's so many different parameters that are, that are coming together and, and that's all been accelerated by the pandemic. There's no doubt about it. Oh, um... You know, none of this happens by chance. You were well prepared for the pandemic. You were well prepared in an industry which, as you said, was a little lagging in cloud adoption. Uh, I'm sure as a leader in that position, to bring the company to that space, you must have taken a lot of challenging decisions in the years preceding uh, when suddenly this was the right way forward, when cloudification became uh, you know, a buzzword. Uh, what were some of these challenging decisions? You know, people generally avoid changing the way they're functioning. So what were some of those inflection points? Tell us some stories from the trenches, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and it, it is very true. There's a lot of challenges you go through. The, the EPC world is, um, it, it's a unique culture. We don't usually like to change the way we operate and, and, you know, infrastructure trying to drive some of that or IT driving that can often be a challenge. Um, you know, challenges early, obviously, when we went into work sharing, that's a work process issue, you know, sharing the workload with, with other offices to, you know, accelerate your schedule and these types of things. Um, that work pro process change and the challenge associated with that was really managed by the business. And, and so, you know, the, the IT organization had a little bit of a slipstream to fall in behind that process change. So the technology adoption wasn't a huge issue for us as long as we uh, we managed the network and provided the um, availability and the performance that the business supported. You know, that work process change was reasonably uh, transparent to us. Now, we did have challenges, as I mentioned, with the application portfolio. Um, most of the big systems that we use today, they're, they're really based on old client server architecture. You've got uh, applications that have a, you know, a, a reliance on very high uh, quality graphics cards that talk to the database. And so the whole application and infrastructure portfolio has got to be very closely tied together. So connectivity issues and some of those things were a challenge for us, as was the, uh, you know, just the, these applications are just very old and people didn't want to move off them to more progressive applications. I think today we are seeing the software vendor community moving more to cloud. But again, I think uh, the pandemic's given them a little bit of uh, a kick in the tail there to accelerate those activities. Um, I think the remote computing infrastructure was a challenge, you know, and and we we tried a few things that honestly they didn't work too, too well for us. And um, we had to back out of, of certain cloud technologies and um, and draw, fall back to some probably more uh, reliable things. Like I don't want to go into too many brand names, but you know everyone uses Citrix as a remote access tool, and that's been uh, very reliable for us. 
but I think there's some new things in VDI. And, and we'd go, we'd make some forays into that and, and then we'd have to make the hard decision to shut it down and try something else because it wasn't really giving us the performance. So I think, you know, from a lessons learned, you can try these things, but the, the uh, you're going to be pretty quick to decide whether it's going to be a winner or a loser and, and cut it off quickly. I also think another challenge with the, the, uh, the community that provides the cloud services, their technology was changing pretty rapidly. And, and a lot of them are head down a certain fork branch in the tree and then stop and change technology. And that was, you know, very difficult to work through. Um, and a challenge that probably all of us have in, in IT leadership is just the demands around cost management. And I think the commercial models that the cloud providers had in place um, were very difficult to, to accommodate in, in the EPC world, which has got, you know, tremendously low margins. And, um, and, and when I think they're, they're finally working with us better to make them more cost effective, I think my team probably will tell you today that they think a, an on-prem solution is, can often be cheaper, but I think the whole access control allowing suppliers, joint venture partners, clients, or everyone to access these execution environments. You know, the, the business efficiency of that today outweighs, you know, any of the cost differentials we struggled with before with cloud. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's certainly something we've been seeing for a while as well. Uh, the business case for cloud goes far beyond the cost. I think yeah. uh, you cannot build a successful business case for cloud just based on cloud and uh, on, on cost anymore. Um, so Robert, I think, uh, you know, when uh, when we were having a discussion as, as part of the research for the National Office on Report, uh, you did mention that uh, you have had several, um, you've had a lot of experience with working with service providers as, as a part of this journey. Uh, you know, given uh, the audience that we have, would you like to speak a little bit more about uh, what models you use while working with service providers, what worked well, what could have been better? Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll try to address that uh, question, Swap Nil. I, you know, I, I fall back and we discussed this in our earlier conversation. You know, we have a tremendous example of cloud adoption on one of our really large capital projects for a mining client. Um, and we integrated, it was a joint venture where most of the projects are that we work on today, the, you know, the billion dollar plus projects are typically joint ventures. So you sh you've got to provide access to your joint venture partners, your suppliers, your clients get visibility. You want to bring in um, procurement logistics information. You want to see, you know, video and things from construction sites to measure progress and all these types of things. It's just, it's endless all of the technologies you can bring together. I think with the, um, you know, with the, the partnering side of it, you've, you've got to have someone who, who realises that the EPC, EPC world is a lot different to a lot of other industries that you, you adopt cloud. Um, and I know we all tend to think that we're all unique, but, um, you know, we do have some challenges. There's a lot of data privacy challenges. There's a lot of, sequencing and release of data challenges and these types of things. But what you've got to do is you've got to have partners that will sit with you and, and honestly, truly understand the business process. Um, and, and I leave that, you know, most of the time, obviously to the technical teams that, that know this part of the business a hell of a lot better than I do, but you've also got to have partners that understand your commercial constraints as well. And I said that earlier on, that was a challenge in the early days. But when you're making, you know, minimal margin, you also may have other critical activities that um, that you may have incentives associated with, or you may have some some risk associated with. And and giving your partners visibility to that is key. And I know one of the lessons learned from our point of view was initially we liked to we were probably a little bit more closed off in sharing information with our partners, you know, our security policies and some of our work practices and really what are the critical milestones on a project, you know, you have to share those with your partners so that they can better align their solutions, you know, to those needs and, and be relevant um, with regard to how you provide maintenance and these types of things. And um, 
I think that it really has to be a partnership. I've had some challenges in the past where you've worked with a partner that's built a solution in usually in an adjacent industry and they try to cobble it to fit within your world. Um, and, and that honestly has never worked well for us. And, and you know, we want to have partners that, that are around for a long time because we do, you know, you've got 50, 60, 100 odd projects going on simultaneously and you want to make these cloud execution environments repeatable and, and easy to establish and set up. And, and if you get good partners that work with you in those times, you've got a, a long relationship together. Perfect. Uh, what, what's also happening here is that, uh, you know, service providers are also learning as they go along, right? Suddenly being uh, cloud centric has become really, really important for the service providers as well. Um, what would be your advice to service providers who either work with you or, or with some of your uh, colleagues? Uh, how should they uh, change their approach to an increasingly cloudified uh, world uh, across industries? What would your advice be to them? You know, I, I think they have to work with your team very early on to, to understand the environment, to understand maybe there are legacy applications in there that we've got to continue to work with that may change their solution. Um, as I said, on the commercial side, understand how that operates so you can better tailor the solution to what you need. They do have to focus every day increasingly, unfortunately, around cyber and security. So the whole access control and the models associated with that and, and how you provide, you know, compute capability, whether it's on a mobile device or a you know, from home or from an office location. It's just, you've got to understand how the projects are ex executed, you know, the phasing of projects, the applications you're using the, through those, at those different phases in execution. And then, you know, how you secure the data, as I mentioned that, I can't mention that enough because that it really is such a, a big challenge for us today. I think people, our client base and even our employees they're more trusting of a cloud environment today than they were a number of years ago, um, but it still needs a lot of attention. And then I always get back to the commercial model, just understand that so we can work to together. And, you know, we both, everyone wants to be successful. Um, we want our partners to be successful as well, but we, we have to work together as a team to make, to pull these things off. They are very, very complex. Yeah. So I think just to summarize that, um, Keep security uh, right up front and center. Understand the industry that you're working in. Really. Mm -hmm. And commercial models still are really important. You need to keep a good handle on that. Yeah, and, and as I said, understand the application portfolio, you know, the, the tools that you're using. You know, some of the big EPCs have always got a, a, a few applications that are in-house developed that are kind of the central cog in their execution platform. And, and they always bring nuances as to how they fit into these into these cloud environments. So spend time really understanding that. Having have a good data architect, have a good infrastructure architect as part of your solutions team. Well, thanks so much, Robert. That that was really really helpful. Um, thanks so much for your time and and this great insight. Thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome, Swap. We'll have a good day. Yeah, you too. Um, over to you, Vandana. Thank you, Robert and Swapnil, for that wonderful conversation. And thank you for sharing such key insights from your experience. Once again, you can download this report through NASCOM community's website at community.nascom.in, as well as the main NASCOM website, which is www.nascom.in. Thank you and back to you, Justin. Well, uh, absolutely wonderful, uh, Achyuta, Swapnil, Vandana, and Robert. Thank you so much for enlightening us on the highlights of that report. Mm -hmm.